Hi, everybody, and welcome to worship today. If we haven't had that chance to meet face to face, my name is Chris. I'm the pastor right here at Trinity Lutheran Church in Loveland, Colorado. This is Marsha, our worship director, and uh, just welcome to worship today. Uh, We know that we've got people worshiping from uh, a lot of different places, and uh, wherever you are today, we're just glad to have you here. Uh, Just a note that today is our Consecration Sunday. It's a a day when we uh, give thanks and celebrate the generosity and the gifts that we receive uh, that allow us to make our ministry happen. Uh, Those gifts might be financial. Those are the gifts of how people plan to serve in the coming year. And we give thanks for those and celebrate those today. Uh, So with that in mind, let's just take a moment to prepare our hearts and our minds for worship today. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Amen. Holy One, we We confess confess that that we are not awake awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We We forget forget the least of our siblings. siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children. And Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please join in the prayer of the day. O God of justice and love, you You illumine illumine our our way through through life with with the the words words of your your Son. Give us the light we need and and awaken awaken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And we go to some special music today from the Association of Lutheran Church Musicians. Uh, If you keep a a close eye, you might even see Danielle Leitner and Marsha Green. After that, we'll go to Jeff Stinson for our reading today.
Today's reading is from the book of Amos, chapter 5, beginning with the 18th verse. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord! Why would you have the day of the Lord? It is darkness and not light. As if a man fled from a lion and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand against the wall, and a serpent bit him. Is not the day of the Lord darkness and not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your feasts, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the peace offerings of your fattened animals, I will not look upon them. Take away from me the noise of your songs. To the melody of your harps I will not listen. But let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Herein ends the reading. Our psalm for today comes from Psalm 70. We will chant this responsively by verse. Be pleased, O God, deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be put to shame and confounded. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. Let those who say to me, ah, and gloat over me, turn back because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say forever, Great is the Lord. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me quickly, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer, O Lord. Do not tarry. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went out to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those, were who, those who were ready went with him, into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came along also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the gospel of our Lord. And now we go to some kids' time today. Well, hello, young ladies and gentlemen. It is so good to see you here today. The parable that Jesus told his disciples and the people around him, uh, the little story that he told, talked about 10 young women. Uh, and they all had lamps. And this right here, is one of my favorite little lamps. Uh, it's got a little wick here. It's kind of like a candle. It's got oil inside here that allows it to burn. And you know, 
in this parable, it talks about five young women who had enough oil in their little lamps and about five young women who didn't. And sometimes it's really tempting for us when we hear stories like this, when we hear parables like this, um, to think about things like, hmm, I wonder what the oil is. Maybe it's about us having enough faith. Or maybe that oil in that lamp is all about making sure that we do enough good things that make God happy. But you know what? It's a lot like this oil lamp right here. Can you see inside? Can you see exactly how much oil there is in here to burn? We can't really tell, can we? It's easy sometimes for us to try to, to make assumptions about that, to kind of say, well, maybe it has uh, enough oil or not. Just like it's easy for us sometimes to look at other people and try to decide whether or not we think they have enough faith or not. But instead of focusing on whether we think somebody has enough faith or enough good works or anything like that, I think Jesus invites us to look at something different. Because see, this oil lamp, it's not just about how much oil is in there. It's not meant to just hold oil. It's actually meant to do something different. A lamp like this is meant to share its light for everybody to see. And so maybe, just maybe, Instead of focusing on whether or not we think somebody is enough or has enough, maybe instead we ought to simply enjoy the light of Christ that is shining through them every single day. Because I know when I look at you, I see the same light of Christ shining in your face. Let's pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you so much for coming to us and joining us in the midst of everything that we face. Uh, God, we know it's tempting sometimes to look at other people and to try to, to judge whether or not we think they have enough or are good enough. Uh, but God, instead, help us to always focus on the light that you are shining through them and through us every single day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, thanks everyone. We'll see you soon. Will you please pray with me? Gracious Lord, we know that we cannot do justice to your word. And so we pray today that your word would come and bring justice to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Parables like the one that we hear today seem so easy don't they? When we hear Jesus say, the kingdom of heaven will be like this, we immediately want to grab our notebook and our pencil and start taking notes. Because if Jesus is going to be talking about what it takes to get into heaven, we want to pass the test. It also seems so easy because parables like this talk about two camps the wise and the foolish. We like it when things fall into camps like this, don't we? As we're wrapping up an election season, that's pretty much what we're told to do, isn't it? Either you're a Democrat or a Republican, you're a, a good guy or a bad guy, get on the Trump train or the Biden bus, because there's only one side that's right. And everything else is wrong. That's what we're told, isn't it? It's so tempting to think this way. It's tempting to try to divide the world up into two different camps. And it's tempting sometimes to turn Jesus' parables into morality tales, kind of like Aesop's fables. But if we are willing to take Jesus at his word, there really is so much more that's going on here. From the outset of this parable, you really can't tell these two groups of young women apart. Both groups were waiting for the bridegroom. They're all a part of the same community. They're all a part of the same group of friends. And oddly enough, they all fall asleep waiting for the bridegroom to come. 
just like the disciples will fall asleep on Jesus in the garden. And they all obviously knew the bridegroom. Even the foolish ones cried out, Lord, Lord. But that cry, Lord, Lord, takes us back to earlier in Matthew's gospel. When Jesus said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. And the lamps, I think, are reminiscent of the Sermon on the Mount when Jesus said, Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Words that we often use in baptism. When we look at Matthew's gospel, maybe waiting with enough oil in our lamps is all about the spirit of that Sermon on the Mount. Maybe it's all about the spirit of the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the merciful. Maybe it's the spirit of the Beatitudes that distinguishes the followers of Jesus from the rest of the world. Maybe it's the spirit of the Beatitudes that defines what the kingdom of heaven really is and what it's like. That spirit is the spirit of the cross. And it disrupts all of the categories that we have become accustomed to and all of our judgmental predispositions. The spirit of the Beatitudes invites us into a life that's not centered on our good works or even on our faith, but on the cross and how it is that this God dies on the cross and how it is that that God is glorified through our lives. We're in the season of stewardship, and that to me really is the invitation to stewardship. The kingdom of heaven is not about what might happen to us in some heaven years from now. The kingdom of heaven is about how heaven is breaking into the world that we live in right now, here, today. The kingdom of heaven is all about how we are actively participating in God's reconciling work here in the world. Now today we are consecrating the gifts that people are generously giving in the coming year. These are the gifts that allow our ministry to thrive. And yeah, even in these crazy times, we are still participating with God in the reconciling work that is happening here in Loveland and beyond. Our worship services in this format are reaching more people than ever. Our ministry teams are still making ministry happen. We're still partnering with HNS and Lincoln Elementary School and the Larimer County Food Bank and Kids Pack and ELCA World Hunger. Confirmation and Bible studies and other fellowship events are still happening. And those things will continue to happen and continue to thrive because of your generosity. Right now, we live in a world that is infatuated with this idea of divide and conquer. Pick one camp and go with it. The last few months have certainly proven that to us. But we are invited to a better way. We're invited to a better way that transcends all of that divisiveness. We're invited into the way of the kingdom of heaven right now. We are invited into a life that is marked by the cross. We are invited to participate in a world where, as the prophet Amos says, justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. We are invited to a life of grace 
that is so unique that people don't recognize us as falling into the prescribed boxes that the world creates. But by the spirit of the cross that shines in every single one of us. We are invited to a life that is so truly unique that people don't praise our good works, but they praise the God who is obviously bringing about life and abundance. This is only a glimpse of what the kingdom of heaven can look like. This is only a glimpse of that world and that life that Christ invites us all to live into. Can you imagine the power that has to change the world around us? Come, Lord Jesus, may your light break into our darkness. Amen. Please join in the hymn of the day, Wake, Awake, for Night is Flying. join in the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, God, in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As I said earlier, this is our Consecration Sunday, uh, a day when we give thanks and we certainly celebrate uh, all the good gifts that people give to make our ministry happen. Um, many of those gifts are the financial gifts, um, but also the, the ways people plan to serve throughout the coming year. Uh, and so, uh, so we give thanks for those today. The body of Christ is made up of many members. Not all have the same function. We are blessed with many members who care for the functioning of the body of Christ here at Trinity. We thank God for them. They give of their time and talents. Without their efforts, generosity, and gifts, we could not all be all God calls us to be. Paul writes of the Macedonian Christians who wanted to share in ministry. They gave themselves first to the Lord and by the will of God to us. Ministry flows from a commitment to serve the Lord. By the will of God, our volunteers are committed to the Lord and to us. God has worked mightily through them to bless us. We thank God for them. We all put flesh and bone on our call to be the body of Christ in the world. We add muscle to our calling to be Christ to one another. Sunday school and vacation Bible school teachers, confirmation and youth leaders, mentors and nursery helpers, musicians, readers, assisting ministers, ushers, leaders of prayer, communion assistants, acolytes, mission project organizers, stewardship coordinators, offering counters, special event planners, quilters, gardeners, artists, bakers, cooks, prayer chain participants, visitors to the hospitalized and homebound, those who prepare funeral lunches, ministers of hospitality of every kind, cleaners, bulletin assemblers, envelope stuffers, office helpers, and so many more. We, we thank, thank God, God for you. you. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts. With them, we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For, for the, the sake, sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and on all who are in need. Holy God, rouse us to deep praise as we gather for worship. Enliven our worship with sincere and heartfelt song. Sustain the work of all church musicians and artists who lead us in praise and prayer. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Holy Judge, let justice roll down like waters over this world. Reign over the courtrooms of every land in the hearts of those who guard the law and those who stand accused of crimes. Be present in cases where we long for both justice and mercy to prevail. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Holy Companion, console those who feel lonely or abandoned. Share the hours of those who live and eat alone. Comfort those who have few friends or who struggle with their identity and place in this world. Heal the broken as we pray for Jennifer, Deanne, Ruthie, Jan, Caitlin, Joan, and all who are in need of God's healing power this day. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. 
Holy Protector, we give thanks for those who have served our country on Veterans Day. Guard the lives of active duty and retired military personnel. Comfort all who mourn those who have died in the line of duty. Heal the wounds, both physical and mental, experienced by service members. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Holy and immortal one, we pray in thanksgiving for the lives of all who have died. Remember us, remind us of the frailty and shortness of our own lives, and inspire us to use them for the building up of your kingdom. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all of creation around your throne, where you will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and make us bold to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor, and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.